Uh, so preemptivity is ongoing for almost 20 years now. So it, it becomes 20 years only anniversary next year in September. Uh, for me personally, it's going to be 25. Uh, I started working on uh, Linux real time in 1999. So it's going to be a big uh, party then. Uh, are we done yet? Uh, kind of. Because there's this thing, Fred K. Come on, people. Pardon? <laughs> so what the hell be so hard about printing a few characters on a console? <laughs> Incredible. Uh, yeah, it has to work from everywhere, including NMI in the worst case. So we have to do it from any random context, which means we have slight concurrency problems. Um, we have uh, magic driver locking problems. <laughs> and um, what we want to do is to have synchronous and asynchronous output. Right now, uh, print K is fully synchronous, mostly. There's some way to not uh, print synchronously that's uh, in situations where we actually can't like in the middle of scheduling we can defer it but that's a, an awkward mechanism and but everything else is pretty much uh, synchronous which is stupid to begin with because if you boot up I mean look at the messages it's the hell of, um, of noise why would you wait for all of this non-information why it goes up it doesn't make sense. So the, what we want, and, and coming from the RT perspective, we, we put uh, console output into threads for a long time. But um, it's not a real, the, the hacks we had in, in, in RT were not a real solution. And we wanted to make it uh, useful for the, for the mainline, for the non-RT part of the kernel too. Um, and a lot of people are waiting for threaded consoles, and we are finally close, zooming in, zooming in. So, yeah, it's something we started to work on in 20, 2018. And we have something like 300 patches. I, I think it's not, it's 400, but by, by now, the 6.6, six, six, the 6.7 merge window got another 100, I think. Um, that's mostly preparatory things, but also now we got the, 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 the core, uh, handover mechanism, which is completely lock, lockless. Yeah, it's kind of lockless. It's stateful. Um, so that this handover mechanism is, is, is the core thing to go thread it because then we have a way to actually say, okay, we take over either in a collaborative way when we have something running here doing console output like the, the thread and we have an emergency message on the other cpu we can ask nicely hand it over to me or if the emergency happens on top of something which runs on this on the same cpu then there's no choice then to take over whole stuff but as we have state we know that there is something fiddling with the console and we can act accordingly right now uh, the, the, the original console implementation is all about uh, let's print and see what happens so hope based basically there's also no way to say okay uh, here is do I have a safe console to print in arbitrary contexts or should I avoid printing it when I just crashed in an NMI? Uh, base, best example is graphic drivers. So if you ha have to do kernel mode setting from NMI context, it's almost guaranteed that you will die. So, but that, because all, everything is synchronous, we write out to all consoles on the first line we print, which means if you're lucky, then you get the first line of the dump on the serial and then it goes south because it explodes in kernel mode setting. So, 
these are the, the, the problems we are trying to solve. We're getting there. You know, three final patch sets, serious out there. Some of some of them are in review already. So we're closing. And don't ask me when it's done. I'm refusing to give answers when it's in terms of print k print k totally fails my predict my predictions it's unpredictable and i lost my crystal ball so now i'm not going to answer that question um i was talking about this a couple of days ago to somebody and uh, and truly the the most of the 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 estimations we had in terms of bringing stuff from the RT tree upstream uh, with all the involved effort, like cleaning up CPU hot block was something like 800 patches or something. Uh, the estimation was one and a half years, roughly. It took us 19 or 20 months. So it wasn't that far off, but print K really fails me. You can estimate what you want. It's going to be wrong. So, there, and that's where we are. Hopefully, it's coming soon to the main line. I'm positive that it will happen before the 20th anniversary. So we should see it sometimes in the near future. And with that, I'm up to questions. Don't be shy. We get a pony with it. A pony? When you merge, we get a pony with it. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Sure. Follow on. Yeah, you, you sent the pony patch, right? Right. I'll send you that. M moving on from ponies, what's the what are some of the changes that happened since last year in print K and what and how does that if oh I don't know what kind of words I'm looking for. Pardon? What are some of the changes that have happened in print K since last year? In your batch set. So <clears throat> What are the main changes for print K right now? Since last year, yes. Since last year. I think conceptually, um, from the concept itself, nothing changed, fundamentally changed. John? Yeah, John, John knows better than I. So, so a year ago uh, at LPC, we presented a proof of concept with this whole new threaded and uh, handover idea. And this idea has been preserved for the things that are going in the main line, uh, but we've, we've reduced some of it uh, because uh, the problem is, is there's seven, about 76 console drivers and they need to be made compatible with this new stuff. And so we kind of got the idea that it might take a while before all 76 drivers are ready. And so one of the big changes that uh, me and, and, and Peter Melodic, the, the print K maintainer, have been working on is just, just trying to change this model so that the old model will continue to exist uh, friendly with the new model. So we can, one at a time, change over these drivers, but the drivers that haven't been changed over will continue to work exactly like they've worked now. And so that was actually a, a quite a lot of work over the last year. How can we try to not marry the two but get them to work together so that you know because uh, if you have some drivers that are using the old stuff and some drivers that are using the new stuff you know you're using graphic and you have an 8250 uh, uh, serial one of them is using the old method one's using the new method and we still want the system to function uh well and so that that, that was actually a lot of the the things we've achieved over the last year yeah why are there so many uh, console drivers, like 76? You start from serial. Yeah, they're, they're mostly serial. There, there really is. There's really only one graphic one uh, and like 75 serial, and then there's USB serial, but I don't know if that counts, but that's a disaster for itself. But. And vir vir virtual consoles, obviously. Uh, so they're after, uh, let's say that they're uh, the done uh, that uh, work, uh, all the uh, print K, uh, what's it, the message is becoming that they're uh, asynchronous or some specific uh, what's it, message can be uh, asynchronous. So the idea is that we, for all the default noise, we just do asynchronous and let have a threat per console. Because right now, if you're 
your your terminal console is way faster than your serial, but you have right in a synchronous model you have to wait. So everything is slowed down to the slowest console possible. Um, and yeah. for regular print out print K, you just delegate it to the threads and they eventually catch up. In an emergency case where you really want to get it out, you switch to synchronous. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, like it's a... not fully synchronous, not necessarily fu fully synchronous. There's some details to be sorted out because right now we, what we aim for is that we at least dump the most important part of the message first into the message buffer before we try to output. Because if you die during output and you only and you die already on the second line, you lost everything. Even even a crash kernel can't recover the information. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to, to to say, okay, let's dump at least the important part, not the fifty thousand lines of F trace dump or whatever, mm -hmm. but the important parts first into the message buffer and then depending on the availability of safe mm -hmm. atomic writing uh, consoles, pick them first. Mm -hmm. So one thing Linus was asking for, if you have uh, a persistent memory as, a, as an option, then you obviously want to write the persistent memory first and then go to serial or go to, to, to graphics. Because if you die in the graphics driver during uh, during output, it doesn't matter. You have you have it persisted already. So that's the the, the thought behind it. Okay. Getting away from oh, it might work. Print and pray. Uh, Justin, add on that if you really want to make sure that everything is flush, that there is a new function for flushing messages, which is used, for example, during suspend or in panic and, and so on. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, Thomas. Hi. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so let's imagine print K is done, gets merged in. Are all architectures going to be on the same level? And what are the challenges after the merge point. So if print K is dear, we basically can um, assume that we have at least the A2, A250 driver in the air, we can enable it on X86 and ORM64. Um, the amount of effort to make, to enable RT on a at least a half a recent uh, architecture is very close to zero. Um, Sebastian, there was an, a risk five enablement patches. It was pretty small, right? So it's not, so it's not, not much of an effort anymore to enable it because we brought all the interesting parts into the, into the generic code. So there might be some, some details left in the architectures to, to tack it. So risk five works. There was not a lot to do. They have perp working. They have interrupts. They have generic infrastructure for entry exit. So they have everything out of the box. So this works well. Uh, Power PC sixty four in the other box is a different issue because they have special MMU handling and so on. Right. So this is busted. I was trying to fix it over the years, but at the end I was like, okay, maybe for later. And ARM sixty four isn't much as well. There's still bits uh, that are missing. There's there's two two small patches or 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 out of three right now. Right, so ARM64 isn't much. Uh, I915 is disabled. This is a big mess for upstream. Right. So this needs to be discussed, for instance. Right. Yeah, so I915 is a horror show, but I915 is a horror show without RT already. So that's not, and uh, there's, there's some solution on the way people are actually writing a, a brand new driver covering at least uh, the last decade of, of Intel, Intel graphics uh, because i915 is 
from a design perspective, the driver is so broken, it's it's unfixable. Yeah. I mean, you, you would end up rewriting it completely. So they started from scratch. You're looking forward to a question from me. I know. Sure. I want to ask about roadmaps. Um, so the question is, once Print K comes in, do you think you can piggyback preempt RT in that same merge window, or are you, are you going to definitely split it? No, I can't. Uh, so if if I if if we ha have it uh, already in next print K, I'm I'm just going to piggyback, or at least try. I mean, yeah. there's no big argument because because it's I mean it's we we have all the stuff in the year. So for if you do not enable it, it's not going to change anything because all the the if defery is already there. Uh, all the con uh, the compile time conditionals are already there, and if you enable it, you ran preempt RT before. So, what? So I don't think it's a risk. Circling back to I nine fifteen, is there any RT enablement for the new Z? I don't know if it's XE driver that's coming up for Intel twelfth gen and later. Uh, I think the driver itself should be just as simple and. Si or T safe as any other graphics driver. It's just I915, which simply doesn't work. Because I915 people decided to have creative locking for the wrong reasons. So I915 has a lot of quirks, and I've seen patches over years, and they never responded, they never got merged. Um, I had bad reports for the AMD GPU drive, for instance, and it was. A week and everything was merged after I sent patches. So it kind of depends on the people working on it. So it, IMD folks were pretty responsive, so it worked well. And I yeah, but it, it was pretty minimal, minimal invasive on, on, on AMD. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't that horrible as on the i915. Right? Well, it adds up. You start with two patches and then five releases, then you have 10, and then we have yeah, 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. But, and, but it was from a design perspective, it wasn't that horrible as i915 maybe because if if you want to fix i915 properly you end up not with 10 you end up with 100 or a thousand <laughs> or hundred thousand i don't know so fun <laughs> yeah and it might work uh, by some definition of work so any other questions No, great. Good. Lunch time. Lunch time. Lunch. Lunch.